first question here, as mentioned by the question, just use your calculator to identify the answer. You should get 15 over 2, which is 7.5. Question 2 here, I multiply the 2 into 3 and negative 4, I get my answer as 6 times 10 to the power of 8 minus 8 times 10 to the power of 6. To make the calculation easier, I change the power of 10 to the power of 6 into power of 8 by converting the 8 into 0 0.08 then only run the calculation. So 6 minus 0 0.08 times 10 to the power of 8 will get you 5.92 times 10 to the power of 8. Question 3, you double check all the value using the calculator and list down from the largest first to the smallest. So this will be its correct sequence. Question 14, I split them up into two fractions being divided to each other. So to make my calculation easier, I changed the top part into one big fraction with a denominator of 15 and the bottom part with another denominator of 15. So you will get 19 over 6 which translates into 3, 1 over 6 as your final answer. Question 5 here, area of the circle, we will be using pi r squared. So pi times 50 squared is actually 2500 pi, which is 7853.98 centimeters squared. So translate your answer into m squared. So 1 cm times 1 cm equals to 1 cm squared. 1 cm is actually 0 0.01 meters. So 1 cm square is actually 0 0.0001 meter square. Okay, so 2500 pi times 0 0.0001 is actually 1 over 4 pi, which translates into 0 0.7854 meter square. So there is a total of six sides for this particular shape. So I use the total interior angle formula to identify the total interior angle first, which is 720. And I set the sides that I don't know, as mentioned by the question, they are the same size. So 4x plus 90 plus 90 equals 720. And your x final value will be 135. As for question 7, okay, your y's value here is actually y plus 50 plus 50 equals to 180. So y angle here is actually 80 degree. As for you to identify value of z, we'll be using angle from the radius, okay, joining up a line from outside of the circle will form a right angle. 90 minus 50 equals to 40 degree. For angle T, okay, since you already have Y and OAT's value, you just take 180 minus 90 minus 80, you will get 10. Question 8, the keyword here is inversely. Okay, so we will be using Y equals to K over X your y here is being represented by v and your x here is actually square root of d. So 3 equals to k over square root of 2.25, you get your k's value as 4.5. For v here equals to 4.5 divided by square root of 2.56, you will get your final result as 2.81. For question 9 here, use a straight edge and a compass only. 
construct a perpendicular bisector of the line O A. Okay, so from the line O A, you extended your compass to more than half of it. Draw each at left and right side. Use the same compass and the same distance. Draw another two arc shape from point A. Okay, the line there will be the intersection will form you a line that is perpendicular to OA. Okay, the perpendicular sides meet the circle at C and D. Measure and write down the size of AOD. So C D is a random point. You just put it down like what I did here. And to calculate AOD's value, this one will be 60 degrees. For question 10, okay, saw throat is 0.45, no saw throat will be 0.55. And with saw throat, no flu is 0.4, which means with saw throat and flu will be 0.6. The other condition is no sore throat and flu is 0.2 and no sore throat with no flu is 0.8. So state the probability that the person chosen has a flu. So it's either sore throat with flu or no sore throat and flu. So 0.45 times 0.6 plus 0.55 times 0.2. The final results will be 0.38. For question 11a, okay, the square there simply represent the matrix was being multiplied twice. Okay, so your final results 8, 5, 20, 13. If you are having trouble to solve matrix question, you can just refer to my workings details there and get it sorted out. B simply identifying the inverse of this matrix given. So I listed down what is A, what is B, what is C, what is D, and to show you the full details calculation. So your determinant will be 2 and substitute each of it into the respective position. You get a result as 1 over 2 bracket 3, negative 1, negative 4, and 2. Multiply the 1 over 2 into it, you will get your final results as above. In question 12 here, okay, describe the correlation. This one is actually negative. The higher your English test mark, the lower your mathematics test mark. Okay, so after you plotted down the point at B, okay, you're required to draw a line of best fit. So the line of best fit here is you're trying to join as many points up as possible and the rest should be sitting right next to the line you have drawn so estimate the line uh, the mark she gained for english test when you have mathematics is 45 so it's 45 your english test mark should be somewhere around the range of 32.5 question 13 here okay i listed down all the details Okay, AC equals to half of AB, CB equals another half of AB, AB equals to half of AD, and BD equals to half of AD. Okay, so the position vector of C, we'll be using OC. Okay, so OC equals to OA plus AC, which translates into A plus 1 over 2 of AB. AB here is actually AO plus OB, which is B minus A. After the conversion, your OC's value should be B only. As for you to calculate vector of CD, we'll be using CB plus BD. Okay, 
CB here is actually half of AB and BD is actually half of AD. Okay, AD is actually 2 bracket B minus A. Okay, so after the conversion, you should get your final results as 3 over 2 bracket B minus A. Question 14 simply substitute 9.8 and 2 into its respective position. By doing so, you'll get your outcome as 2.84. And to rearrange G into the subject, you can, you can just follow my workings there and get your answer. Question 15, calculate the total distance. What I did here was to split it into two trapezium. Okay, so I listed down the details of the trapezium that I have. So the formula for the trapezium is actually top plus bottom, multiply top plus bottom divided by two, multiply by its height. So after the calculation, you should get 156 kilometers. And to find the average speed, simply takes total distance divided by the time. So the total distance here is 156 and the time is actually 13 hours. So your kilometers per hour will be 12 kilometers per hour. Question 16 here, identify the length of AB. Okay, we will be using the formula I show you above. So all you need to do is to set the coordinate as x1, y1 and the other one as x2, y2 and fill in the respective blank. Final results of this calculation should get you 3.61 after correcting it to three significant figures. To identify the equation of AC, Okay, first thing that I did was to find its gradient. After getting its gradient, you choose one of the points that you have there to calculate C's value. So C here is actually 2.5. So the final results should be Y equals to 1 over 2 plus 5 over 2. Question 17, okay, so I first identify G's functions when your x is 1. So when your x is 1 in G function, it should get negative 2 as the results. Then I substitute this negative 2 into F function again. You should get your results as 1 over negative 2 plus 4, which is 1 over 2. In question B, finding the inverse of H function. So first thing I did was H function change in Y, swap the X and Y's position, and rearrange to find the new Y. So new Y here will actually be cube root of X minus 1. Question C, solve the equation when gx equals to negative 2. So x squared minus 3x equals to two, negative 2. You should bring it over and run the factorization. You should get your x equals to 2 or x equals to 1. Question 18. Okay. Your part A here, find the value of t when it is 23. So what you need to do is to substitute 23 into n's position. You should get your t's results as 4,324. For your b here, u1 is actually t2 minus t1, which is 4. And then your u2 is actually 9, your u3 is 16 and your U4 is 25. 
so u1 is 4 u2 is 9 over there okay since i have 4 9 16 and 25 you can now identify the n term okay the second row must be the same then you can apply it into the formula so 2a equals to 2a equals to 1 for, for, for the next formula here is 3a plus b equals to the center value of 5 so b equals to 2 and the last one is a plus b plus c equals to 4 c equals to 1 substitute a b and c into the respective position you should get your results as n square plus 2n plus 1 which is n plus 1 bracket square So for section C, okay, V1 equals to 4, V2 equals to 20, V3 equals to 56, and V4 equals to 120. So if you compare it to T, it's actually uh, 4 times of T's value. So all you need to do is to take 4 multiplied by T's n term, then you should be able to identify the V's n term. So how do you notice this is whenever there's no uh, significant trend okay showing you that okay you should come immediately compare the n term and the results between the sequence given by the question okay so this is pretty much it for this particular paper it's slightly harder compared to other 2011's paper however this will be a very good practice for your examination. So if you have friends that are struggling to solve all this kind of parts here, feel free to share this channel to them and I wish you all the best for your upcoming examination. Thank you.